Welcome to How to Prepare Your Home for Your New Retired Racing Greyhound. My name is Elaine and I will be your guide. Adopting a retired racing greyhound and welcoming him or her into your family is an exciting time for both you and the greyhound. Preparing yourself and your house can help make the homecoming smoother and safer. I will cover nine topics explaining why they are important and how they could be potential safety concerns. I will then give tips for safeguarding you, your family, and your retired racing greyhound. The topics I will cover are the importance of the right collar and leash, identification, fences, feeding and food bowls, supervising and crating, counter surfing and hoarding tendencies, temperature extremes, introducing children and small animals, and training. Okay, let's get started. The importance of the right collar and leash. Retired racing greyhounds cannot be trusted off lead until they prove themselves reliable and respond to your commands of stay or come. Greyhounds have keen eyesight and very quick reflexes. They can accelerate to speeds of more than 40 miles an hour in three strides starting from a dead stop. If they slip their collar and catch sight of a rabbit, they will be gone in a flash long before you can give the command to stay. They are so focused on the chase that once they stop running, they are lost and cannot find their way back. Retired racing greyhounds do not know that roads and cars are unsafe, so the danger of being hit is very high. Greyhounds have narrow heads, thick muscular necks, and small ears. They can easily slip their heads out of standard collars. Martingale or Greyhound collars are best. They expand and sit comfortably on the hound's neck when off lead. When on lead, the collar contracts and catches at the narrow portion of the neck just behind the skull. You should not use a retractable length leash until the Greyhound learns not to bolt after small animals or in response to strange noises. If you lose grip of this leash, the noise it makes as it is dragged behind the greyhound will scare them and cause them to run further. If using a retractable leash, use one that is all flat webbing. Do not use the ones that are partially nylon corded. Injuries to you or the hound can occur especially since the greyhounds have short coats and thin fragile skin. If the nylon cord becomes wrapped around their legs, it can cause an abrasion or worse. E-collars may not be effective when greyhounds are focused on a chase. They just get so focused that they will not notice the zap or just ignore it. The best thing to do is use a martingale collar and a six-foot leash and you and your hound will be safe. Identification. As we discussed before, Greyhounds are fast and focused when on a chase. Once they are finished running, they are not able to find their way back. It is important to have an ID tag on your Greyhound so that when found, they can be reunited with you. The tag should have the dog's name and your contact information, either your phone number, address, or both, whichever you prefer. Racing Greyhounds are all registered by the National Greyhound Association, the NGA and their registration numbers are tattooed in their ears. The letters of the tattoos usually correspond with the kennels they are from, but the numbers are their registration numbers. This can be used as an additional method of identification. You may want to have your veterinarian write the tattoo number in the Greyhound's file. Many pet owners have started microchipping their pets. A small microchip the size of a grain of rice is injected under the skin of the pets between the shoulder blades. The microchip carries a unique number that can be read by a scanner. The number from the microchip, the dog's name, and the owner's contact information is put into a database. Most veterinarians can place the microchips and have scanners that read the numbers off the microchips. A lost pet can be taken to a local veterinarian and be scanned. If a microchip and its number is found, the database is consulted, and the owner's contact information is pulled up. The 
owner can then be reunited with the lost pet. I have provided a link to the NGA website and some websites that provide information on microchipping. Fences, physical barriers. Greyhounds have quick reflexes, keen eyesight, and can reach speeds of 40 miles an hour in three strides from a dead stop. Greyhounds are also extremely focused on the prey when chasing. So, greyhounds should not be off leash unless they are in a fenced in area. The fences must be a solid physical barrier. Hedges and split rail fences can be run through. Electronic or invisible fences do not stop a greyhound on a chase. They simply ignore the zap. Usually a greyhound will not jump a fence, but it is wise to have a fence tall enough to avoid the temptation. A five-foot fence should be adequate for most greyhounds. Keep the fence in good repair and make sure that there are no jagged edges or sharp points that can cause injury to the greyhound's thin skin if rubbed against. Feeding at food bowls. Know your greyhound or greyhounds, especially if one or more are food hounds. Food hounds live for feeding time and can become very excited or even obnoxious if you do not correct behavior early. Each greyhound should have his own feeding space and his own food bowl. This is very important if you are feeding more than one dog at a time. This helps prevent food-triggered fights or development of food aggression. Meals should be down and the bowl picked up after no more than 30 minutes. If he has not finished by then, he is either not hungry or will learn to eat when fed. This will help you and your greyhound get on a schedule and stay on it. Typically, two small meals a day is better than one large one. Ad-lib feeding is not recommended, and the greyhound proofing of storage of food is highly recommended. A food hound will continue to eat even after he has had the proper amount of food he needs. Overeating can lead to obesity, or worse, bloat, which is a potentially fatal health emergency. Also, some table foods are poisonous to dogs. Foods like grapes, onions, garlic, caffeine and coffee, chocolate. There are just many of them, and those are just some examples. Since greyhounds are such tall dogs and have long necks, use of raised food and water bowls is recommended to help take the strain off of their spines and to make it easier for them to swallow. You can simply place the food or water bowl on a raised step or purchase a raised feeding station online or at your local pet store. It is recommended not to use plastic food or water bowls. Some dogs exhibit allergic reactions when fed from plastic bowls. They can lose pigmentation in their nose and develop sores on their noses and lips. Use ceramic or stainless steel bowls. Keep them clean and replace any bowl that becomes chipped or cracked. Supervision and crating. Until you know your greyhound and he can be trusted on his own, he must be supervised. This means you should always have eyes on him. Just like children, Greyhounds can get into trouble in a nanosecond. At first, you may want to have him on a leash so that he cannot wander too far from you. If you cannot supervise him, he should be crated. Now, some people think crating dogs is cruel. As long as the dog is not left in the crate for more than several hours at a time, it is not cruel. Dogs are denning animals. They instinctively know not to mess their den area, and it also becomes their safe haven. I keep the crate up and the door open when he is allowed run of the house. When my dog gets tired or has had enough of being around guests, he will go lie down in his crate because it's his own safe place. 
The crate should be a wire crate to allow the circulation of air, especially in the summer. The crate should be at least one and a half times longer than the hound's body. The hound needs to be able to stand and turn around comfortably. Usually a crate 48 inches deep by 30 inches wide by 36 inches high works well for most greyhounds. Retired racing greyhounds are not housebroken when they leave the track, but they are crate trained. You should provide a soft pad for the floor of the crate. Greyhound's joints are very bony and can develop pressure sores from lying on hard surfaces for extended periods of time. If you live in a cold climate, you may want to provide a blanket for your greyhound for warmth. Fleece or tightly woven material is best. Greyhounds are nesters and will paw and claw at their beds and blankets to get comfortable. Loosely woven materials will not stand up to this punishment. You may also want to have a blanket or a crate cover in the winter to block the drafts and keep your greyhound nice and warm. I have provided links to websites with information on crate training and where to purchase crates and pads. Countersurfing and hoarding tendencies. Retired racing greyhounds are tall dogs. They stand 32 to 34 inches at the shoulder. They also have long necks, which allow them to easily see what is on any countertop. When standing on their hind legs, even the top of the refrigerator is well within their reach. Greyhounds are food driven. Food, regardless if it is fresh or frozen, is not safe if left unattended with even the best behaved grade hound. I defrost my meats in the oven or microwave. Also, be aware that some foods are poisonous to dogs. Onions, grapes, and chocolate, just to name a few. So do not you do not want to have candy, fruit, or other foods out on the countertops or tables when your greyhound is unsupervised. Never keep medication bottles out on the, on the countertops. Greyhounds are more sensitive to most drugs than other do breeds of dog. Even over-the-counter medications that you may think are harmless can be toxic to greyhounds. Bottles that rattle and make noise can become great toys to a curious greyhound. Accidental overdoses can easily occur should the bottle be chewed open and the contents ingested. Many greyhounds are hoarders. Toys, bones, bananas, car keys, TV remotes, cell phones, jewelry, anything they find is theirs and is taken to their beds or crates for safekeeping. So if there is anything missing around the house, look in the greyhound's bed first. Because of this and their ability to reach things off of countertops and dressers, keep all valuables and potentially dangerous items inside cabinets and drawers. Temperature extremes. Greyhounds have no undercoat, short fur, thin skin, and a very low percentage of body fat. This makes them especially sensitive to temperature extremes they cannot keep themselves warm in the cold weather. They are best allowed to live in the house since they cannot adjust well to outdoors and to extreme temperatures. They are not outdoor living dogs. When walking and exercising your greyhound in cold weather, it is important to provide them with a properly sized coat. Fleece or all weather fabrics are best. The Greyhound's conformation make it difficult to buy a coat from a local pet store. They have deep chests and very small waists and long necks. If a coat does not cover the neck, consider buying a snood, a combination scarf and hat, as seen in the picture. There are several good websites that sell coats designed especially for Greyhounds. In the summer, when temperatures are hot, Greyhounds need shade and extra water. Ice cubes are a great treat, and also a way to slow their intake of water. Not that you want to limit the total amount, but instead you want to prevent them from drinking too much too fast. Greyhounds lose heat, or cool down, by panting and through the pads of their feet. To help them cool down, 
provide them with a child's wading pool so they can stand or lie down in a cool shallow water. I have provided a list of websites where you can purchase coats and snoods designed just for greyhounds. Introducing children and small animals. Retired racing greyhounds have had no experience with children. They also think small animals are prey to be chased. However, some retired racers will tolerate small animals without chasing them. Many rescue groups test the greyhounds to determine their level of tolerance to small animals, primarily cats. This test may not be completely accurate, so take care and supervise all small animal and greyhound encounters. Also, make sure the small animal has a safe haven of its own where the greyhound cannot follow. Supervise all child greyhound encounters. Explain to the child that he or she should not scream, try to hug, or hurt the greyhound in any way, especially for their first meeting. Most greyhounds become very gentle and loyal family members, even becoming very tolerant and protective of the children. It is important for both the greyhound and the children to learn good manners and to respect each other and their toys. This is one example of the importance of training. We will discuss training next. Training. Training is very important. A trained dog is easier to live with and stays safer. The first thing to recognize is that training is not something you do to a greyhound, but instead it is a learning experience in teamwork for both of you. Ideally, everyone in the family should participate and promote good behavior. However, it usually works out that one member of the family becomes the pack leader, and the greyhound will listen best to this person. The pack leader must be strong, patient, quiet spoken, and fun. Retired racing greyhounds like routine, so having a daily routine of training can help your dog continue to learn and to keep them from becoming bored. It also helps them stay safe. One of the commands I train my dogs is leave it. It lets the dog know not to touch or take the object of their attention, like a prescription bottle on the counter or a hot stove. Since greyhounds are food oriented, Using food rewards is a very effective method of training. The greyhound learns the basic skill and is given the motivation to repeat the behavior by receiving a food reward. Training areas should include walking on a leash, sit, stay, come, leave it, and no. If you have never trained a dog before, it is recommended that in addition to reading training books, that you take a training class. It is a great opportunity for your greyhound to build social skills. Many community colleges and even pet stores like PetSmart have reasonably priced training classes. These are great for learning basic skills like how to walk on a leash, sit, and stay. To help correct behavioral issues, look for a professional trainer, but make sure the program includes instruction for you as well as the greyhound. Okay, let's take a little quiz and see what you've learned. One, which is the best collar to use on your Greyhound? A, a choke chain, B, an e-collar, C, a martingale collar, or D, a quick click collar? Two, true or false, Retract retractable leashes are the best leash to use on your Greyhound. 3. ID tags should get, contain your Greyhound's blank and your blank information. 4. True or false, all retired racing Greyhounds are registered by the National Greyhound Association. 5. Fences must be a blank, blank barrier. 
Six, which type of food bowl may cause an allergic reaction? A, ceramic, B, plastic, C, stainless steel, D, none of the above. Seven, true or false, raised food and water bowls lessen the strain on the greyhound's spine and helps them swallow easier. Eight, how long should food be left down for a greyhound to eat? A, five minutes, B, 30 minutes, C, six hours, D, all day. Nine, true or false, retired racing greyhounds are already housebroken when they leave the track. Ten, which list of foods are all potentially poisonous to greyhounds? A, grapes, garlic, onions, chocolate, and coffee. B, grapes, garlic, barley, chocolate, and fish. C, garlic, onions, lemons, rice, and chicken. D, garlic, onions, lamb, peanuts, and coffee. 11. A crate should at least should be at least blank times the length of the greyhound's body. 12. True or false? Greyhounds are not tall enough to see what is on most countertops. 13. Greyhounds can be hoarders. Where do they hide their treasures? A Closets, B, corners, C, outside, or D, their beds. Fourteen, why are greyhounds sensitive to extreme temperatures? A, they have short fur and no undercoat. B, they have thin skin. C, they have low percentage of body fat. And D, all of the above. 15. True or false? Greyhounds can easily adjust to living outside. 16. True or false? All retired racing greyhounds can never be trusted with children or small animals. 17. Make sure small animals have a blank blank where they can go but the greyhounds cannot follow. 18. A greyhound can accelerate to speeds of 40 miles an hour in blank strides from a blank blank. 19. True or false? Greyhounds can learn social skills while taking training classes. 20. Training is A. A learning experience in teamwork for both you and your greyhound. B. A way to keep your greyhound safe, to keep learning, and from getting bored. C. A way to correct behavioral issues. Or D. All of the above. Mail your answers to these questions to this email address, and I will grade your quiz. If you get 16 out of 20 questions correct, or 80%, I will mail you a certificate of completion for the tutorial. Please be sure to include your email address. This completes the tutorial, Preparing Your Home for Your New Retired Racing Greyhound. I hope that I have covered the topics and have answered the questions you may have. I want to wish all the best of health and happiness for you and your greyhound. Thank you.